Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for joining me. You're always most welcome. Now, before you start to get cross and say, hang on a minute, that is not the kit as advertised and you contact Trading Standards for me passing off or selling you something that you didn't actually purchase or we'll click on. Um, what we have here is the Matchbox C Venom, De Havilland C Venom FAW22 uh, but of course it's been reboxed by Ravel. We couldn't get our hands on a, an original one, there didn't seem to be too many of those knocking around but a great friend of the channel James Mower, uh, he's very um, kindly stepped in and has said, ah, oh, but I have the Rebox Ravel version. Now, when it first arrived, I was confused as well because it arrived in a, quite, as you know, there's been a couple of kits he's provided, but it arrived in a big box, but not a very long one. And I thought, no, that, that, something's wrong. It's not the right kit. And I forgot it was the Ravel Rebox. And I also forgot how Matchbox used to pack them. They used to have not a very big sprint, but they used to have them side by side with a divider in the middle. Uh, you'll see when I get this out in a second that uh, the sprues are not that huge, but there's quite a few of them. Anyway, let's talk about the sea venom. So, sea venom was brought in in basically in the mid 1950s uh, to replace the vampire. Uh, we had the venom uh, and the sea venom, obviously, the, uh, the sea venom being the carrier based version. It was extremely popular, it ended up also being uh, serving the Royal Australian Air Force. Um, and they even uh, formed an aerobatic display team with them, would you believe? And they had the ability to actually land three abreast of these aircraft in display formation uh, formation landing, which is absolutely incredible. I've seen it on a uh, video on YouTube and I thought, wow, that's quite impressive. And they're coming quite steep as well, almost Lysander like, you know. Anyway, um, it had folding wings, of course, to see Venom. Um, let's just see if Ravel give us any clues though on their rebox. It is it is the Matchbox kit, but it'll be in one colour. Uh, it'll be white, I think it is in here. But let's have a little look at what they say. Here we go. The De Havilland two seats Venom Night Fighter, which was derived from the single seat Venom Fighter Bomber, and the two seat Vampire Night Fighter flew for the first time in August 1950. The prototype was tested by the RAF. Went in production as the Venom NF2. The same prototype was also tested as its suitability for the use on Royal Navy aircraft carriers, who then ordered an upgraded version. From 1954 onwards, the Sea Venom FAW 20 type were in service on British aircraft carriers. But these were later replaced by the significantly improved FAW 21, which had a reinforced undercarriage, improved radar and a more powerful de Havilland Ghost 105 engine. The pilot's seat was also raised to a slightly higher position. Some of the Sea Venom FAW-21s were in the three squadrons of the fleet air arm that took part in the Osper Operation Musketeer during the Anglo-French invasion of the Suez Canal in November 1956. So it's the Suez Crisis, yeah? Towards the end of 1956, later production models were equipped with ejector seats for the crew for the first time, which were then standard for the final production variant, this one, the FAW-22. The Sea Venom FAW-22 had the improved 105 Ghost engine version, with 2,404 kilograms of static thrust, which gave it astounding rates of climb. There you go, there you go. So then, nothing to say about the box, but nice artwork, but... Not quite the same as the Matchbox, though if you notice on the thumbnail, I included the original Matchbox rather cheekily, I know. <laughs> um, but I did say it was a Revel Rebox, I think. Um, but it's, it's, it's still a very anodyne bit of artwork. That's clearly not the original, because uh, Roy Huxley drew it landing on the carrier and they got rid of all that for whatever reason. Anyway, many, many thanks first of all to James Mower. Uh, let's have a look at his lovely model. See what we've got. Another matchbox. Now, it's not going to be two, three colours, which is really shame, but it's not like, don't let that put us off too much. In a navy plane, being in white, it's not such a bad thing. All right, I'm going to gently put that down for him there. What have we got? Instructions uh, 2007, so they might, might not be too bad because that's some of the later of our stuff. So another example of a reboxing uh, matchbox product. They've sort of gone back to obviously Matchbox's original tooling. It's good bag. 
Um, but let's have a look. So I think we'll start with the instructions. We'll pop all these parts over to one side. See what I mean? How they designed. They were quite smallish, modest sprues, and in the matchbox box they were like that, side by side, with a divider in the middle to stop them rubbing. Anyway, we'll get into the parts later. See what we have. Because th this is a kit, the matchbox tooling. I've never seen it before, ever. Never had one, so let's have a nosy. Just um, <laughs> telling you all about the different squadrons here, and it mentions about the Australian Sea Venom. They call it the FAW 53. So one, two, three squadrons. Hmm. And then a further four squadrons. Wow. They retired the aircraft in uh, 1970, I think it was. 1970. So, let's have a look. What Ravel are going to deliver for us and how much box like it would be. Oh, well, we've got some lovely decals. These are nice. Uh, printed in Italy for Ravel. These are going to be... Uh, Cartograph, aren't they? I think you can guarantee it. Here we go. Those are very, very nice. Got the Aussie markings here, because we didn't cover about the markers, we'll come to that in a second. Um, you've got some very nice uh, stencils, you've got nice instruments. I mean, th these are nicer than the original ones from, from Matchbox, I'm fairly confident, certainly in terms of quality of the actual decals. Yeah, your shark's mouth. <laughs> Everybody likes a shark's mouth, don't they? Mean-looking shark, no messy. But no, those are nice. Those are uh, real quality. They're kind of a satiny matte finish. Um, but they look very, very nice decals indeed. I'll put them on one side. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any cover sheet for them, but. Um, We've got one of these Ravel build your own Great Wall hobby style sets of instructions where there's no staples. See what I mean? It all just comes apart. Why can't they just put a staple in it? What's wrong with them? Come on. Anyway, I think what we'll do is we'll take this, which is the instructions for the build, and then we'll look at the uh, colour call outs after. Now remember that this is taken from, you can see the original Matchbox type artwork here. So we do get a sprue map which you didn't get with Matchbox. And then it gets right into it. So here we go, building up your jet engines with your uh, entry and exit cones. Then you've got your fan blades here. And this is the Ghost 105 jet engine. It looks very much like a Whittle, doesn't it? It's quite, quite a big, clumsy, clunky looking thing by modern standards, but there we go. They're building that up, then you're bringing up some of the ancillary components around it and the exhaust system you're building up here. Uh, some framework that's going around the exhausts. It does remind me a little bit of the... Uh, sorry, they're not the exhausts, they're the intakes, aren't they, in fact? How interesting. It's quite an odd uh, shape, isn't it, the way they've designed it. So the, the, that's the intake there. See, intake. It looks like a Pegasus engine in reverse. It's weird, isn't it? So intakes and then the exit that way. Building up your little instruments and your cockpit here. Putting actually your cockpit rear bulkhead and the floor together there. Here we've got uh, the sides of the fuselage and then you're going to put your cockpit and your jet engine in together there. Uh, you've got to put 30 grams of nose weight in. That's good. Got to say that these these numbers, the actual typeface, is very matchbox, <laughs> which it would be. Uh, then you put your your guns in underneath the nose, and you bring in the inboard end of the oops, inboard end of the inner wing here, and the uh, the jet intake. Inner wings going on and being glued here to the fuselage, and your top cover cowling for your engine. And then we've got the different versions coming with the different back ends. So the Sea Venom has got a much more sort of shrouded uh, jet pipe than the NF3. Uh, and then we've got some little strakes going on here on the tailplane, uh, which is because it's a twin boom arrangement on the, the Venom, the Sea Venom. So there you go, you've got your rudders going in, those are nice separate rudders. Tailplane in the middle. 
and then we have got all that boom, twin boom assembly then being glued into the main uh, the rear of the uh, the nacelles for the booms on the main wings. Then we're doing our outboard wing tips with your tanks going in here. I have to say I wish they made this a bit bigger because uh, they've got a lot of small illustrations. It's very busy as a sheet isn't it? Uh, you've got your folding wings and you've got your tanks and strakes, top strakes on the wing going on there, tip tanks going on here. Then they're going to glue those in with a little bit of a spark, which is a good idea there. And then also you've got the option to have it folded in the folding position. Um, it's either or though, I don't think they actually fold as such. Then you've got to build up your pilot. So we're going to get a figure. And they are saying different colour schemes depending on which version I think. Oh no, sorry, it's pilot and navigator. Slightly different colourings. And then we've got our wheel bays going underneath, bringing in the pilots. We're complete with our ejector seats, which have got pre molded uh, seat belts on them. And then we're building up this sort of uh, canopy glass house here. Uh, and then you've ultimately got your actual. Um, don't forget, this is the one that had the ejector seat, so it's got this ejector sort of canopy system, and your canopy goes on there building up your wheels and tyres and your gear legs here telling you not to glue it nose wheel there and then we're going to bring all those together and put the, uh, the uh, aerodynamic shrouds over the gear doors gear door covers if you like um, and then they're going to go on here and then we've got the nose leg going in and looks like we've got a couple of them Rockets, not quite sure what sort of rockets those are. The ground attack rockets, obviously, but it doesn't say what they are. And then we've got various strikes and aerials going on near the end here, and followed by missiles, rocket rockets, and navigation light, and close like a pito, uh, an air, aerial radio aerial underneath. And that is your construction. But I don't like the way they've compacted that down very much. Um, However, that is not untypical of what Revel do in Matchbox uh, reboxings. They just sort of try and cram everything onto one page. I don't like it. It would be far better if that had been... You've got to remember the original Matchbox ones, when you see them, they were the whole sheet, so they've reduced the scale of it. But theirs, theirs was a much bigger sheet. It was literally twice as big. It would be A2 size, two page, pages like that when you unfold it. I don't like the way they did that. That's typical of Revel, isn't it? Anyway. Moving on, let's have a look at these colour callouts, see what we've got here. And we've got some rather nice details showing you the uh, uh, HMS Albion 1960, Royal Naval Air Service. And it's got the shark's mouth on it here, as you can see. Looks very nice, doesn't it, that one? That's basically white underneath the grey on top. Then you've got the Royal Australian HMS uh, Melbourne aircraft carrier, um, which is uh, another different scheme altogether. You've got some lightning bolts on this one, and here we seem to have a pale grey and dark grey scheme, I think, because it's in black and white, which doesn't really help. You know, we talked about this, didn't we? We saw that Hobby Boss yak and how nice it is when they put them in colour. I don't know why Ravel couldn't do that. And then you've got Royal Air Force uh, Stradisol 1955 to 58. And yeah, that's just a more conventional camo Royal Air Force version. So that's the Venom, not the Sea Venom, of course. There's some subtle differences. It's got the more open tailpipe. If you, look, if you look at the difference underneath, look at the Sea Venom here. Look at the tailpipe shroud. And over on the vet standard Venom, it's got a completely open jet pipe. They're quite different in that respect. And then a blank sheet of paper on the back for no particular reason. Okay, well, um, yeah, I'm afraid that that was just um, a classic case of the Ravel reboxing and the Matchbox kits. They always do it their way and they sort of spoil it really. Why they can't just simply reprint it and put their name at the top, I don't know. They always have to faff around and sort of spoil it, reducing the image size and things like that. Anyway, let's move on and have a look at the plastic. So, starting with the clear parts. Now then, he's told me I can open the bag. 
Um, should I know? Should I know? I think not, because the rest of it doesn't need to be open, it's already open, but I don't think we should open the bag for him. You can clearly see it's got the PK506 Matchbox uh, notification on it, which uh, is quite, quite funny. Let's have a look at that. Let's see if you can make this out. There it is. There it is, PK506 it says, so that's a Matchbox reference number. Um, but it's nice and clear and it has this sort of outer canopy main sort of uh, outer canopy shall we call it, big shroud and then you have the inner canopy section that jettisons if they have to eject. So yeah it, it's a nice it's a nice bit of plastic to be quite honest. I know we're getting a lot of reflections but trust me that's that looks pretty clear and it's nicely bright and sharp looking a nice, nice bit of clear sprue that to be honest, very nice. But I so say I think it'd be a bit unfair to open that bag for him. Uh, we don't need to, we just don't need to on that one. Uh, but there's two, two slightly different designs. One design is slightly rounder on the Venom than the C Venom I think. Okay, so I'll put that one aside. Now the rest we can see properly because they're all out anyway. So, starting with this great big white sprue. Now remember this is a Matchbox kit folks. So there's not, there's not a lot of detail here, I'm just probably isn't detail in the real aircraft. I think the booms are made of wood, weren't they, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't think it's the best figures I've ever seen from Matchbox. Some of their figures can be quite good actually in quite a lot of detail, but I know it's not helped by the white and the camera focus won't be maybe at its best, but they're a bit softly moulded to put it mildly, aren't they? Look like they've been, and the heads, the heads look too small for the body to me. Um, but I don't mean the helmet. The helmets look too big, but the actual head looks wrong. <laughs> looks a bit too small. Anyway, we won't dwell on that. But one is the pilot, one is the navigator. At least they are two distinctly different characters, as you can see. Not just a replication; it's the same. See how they look different slightly. So that's good. You know, one's got his legs slightly more spread. Ooh, ooh, uh, misses. <laughs> um, anyway, moving on swiftly. Uh, over on the tail booms, <coughs> excuse me. You can see we've got these these two twin tail booms here, and then we've got our two different types of again venom versus sea venom. You can see that this is much squarer. I think that's the sea venom. It's got the beefier undercarriage. It's squarer, and it's a bit smaller and uh, more petite looking on the venom. But that's a nice sprue, it's very solid, no problems with that. Then we're on to a big sprue here which has got the inboard wing sections on it. It's a big old model this isn't it, it's going to be quite a big plane. Um, those instruments look absolutely huge as well, look at the size of those compared to my hand. Wow, that's really a little bit spectacular isn't it? Mm. See all your instruments there. This is the uh, lower wing inboard section here, both of them. Um, nicely recessed panel lines, a bit thick perhaps. Mm. And there's a bit of, uh, there's a few sink marks in there folks, I've got to tell you. Mm. Oh, you can feel it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you can actually feel that, that sink mark there. See it? That's a definite depression in the plastic, so that's a bit of a a bit of a no-no. It's just on that side, the other side, it's it's okay. Yeah, you can actually see it, but I don't think you can feel it. No, you can't feel anything there. That's fine, but that there, you can feel the depression, you know. Ooh, it's like a trench. That's not so good. Anyway, um, we have got obviously the uh, this is where the booms come out. That's very nice. Um, it's very soft moulding, but we know that that's typical of Matchbox Town, really. Then we've got this big one. This has got these alternative different um, jet exits. You've got the Venom here and the Sea Venom here. Um, um, whether that was to do with preventing splash uh, or trying to, the fact that it's landing on a deck with people around, I think they're trying to reduce noise, reduce vibration and have a bit of a shroud around it. Here's your gun port that goes under the chin. 
obviously here is the side of the main fuselage not a huge amount of detail it's very very thick panel lining I've got to say yeah you can see it there can't you I mean that is very very chunky look at that that's huge <laughs> even for 30 seconds scale that seems a bit OTT um, yes I'm just feeling that they've um, they've not got their finest moulding on this one over here we have got another one where we've got lots and lots of uh, detail parts we've got the wing tip tanks as you can see which look absolutely massive uh, we've got all these parts of the jet engine here for the um, combustion chamber Ooh, several rockets here that are coming off the sprue very nervous to touch them put them back a bit um, that one's just twisted hasn't it don't break it don't break it don't break it off <laughs> anyway there's your rockets and then you've got your, uh, your impeller oh sorry the back of the uh, engine here Very soft moulding throughout, I've got to say. It's not it's not as good as the Lysander, in fairness. The mould, I don't think. Uh, this is your in intake, which I thought was the exhaust. Harrier fashion on the Pegasus. It's not. It's actually the intake on this aircraft. Uh, jet intake. And then you've got your rear cone here for your exhaust shroud. Um, it's nice. It's got a big, chunky sort of presence to it, that's for sure. And then, we, oh, I've got another part coming off the sprue, it's the nose. Oh my god, my god, don't come off, don't come off. Ooh, a little bit fragile. This is the uh, Revell packaging for you. It doesn't really protect it that well, does it? Um, we've got some ejector seat, oh, look, ejector seats here. Complete with their uh, seat belts. I wonder why they put it in white. It's a terrible colour of plastic white, I hate it. <laughs> It always looks, you can't see, I don't think, the detail on the camera that I can see because the camera doesn't like it. There's your cockpit. Um, there is the undercarriage legs here and here. There's your nose. Big bulbous nose on the Venom. Here these things that look like open books, those are actually the, the hinges for the actual wings. So if you have the wing open, uh, folded I should say, then you'd be employing these in that position. The nose is about to come off any second. I might have to effect a minor repair for James on that before it goes back, otherwise that'll be off in transit I think. Anyway, yes there's some, um, no there's the arrestor hook. Where is it there? Oops. Press the hook. And then finally, we have got the outboard section of the wing. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I think I'm, I got it wrong earlier, didn't I? It was inboard and outboard, so the inboard obviously is this section. And this is the outboard section, and I think that's the top versus the other one being on the bottom. Got your air intakes there, jet intakes, baffled, and then you've got the arms of the crew here, and then you've got a couple of these uh, gear cover, door covers, wheel bay door covers, and again, it's very, very soft moulding. Can we get this in the light for you? Can I? There, see what I mean? Very soft, isn't it? This. It's really there. Yeah. Those elevator trim tabs. It's very softly moulded. Too soft, I think. I don't feel it's Matchbox's best ever mould, but we may not be. You know, we might not be seeing it at its best anyway. So. Hmm, I'm slightly disappointed. Um, it just seems super soft compared to the others. It, it's almost like a 70 second scale kit that's just been scaled up and they haven't made any extra finesse on it at all, really. Um, but it's very hard to judge fairly because obviously this is the, oops, this is the Revell and we don't know how well the moulds have been kept. It's almost like the moulds have got a little bit, let's say dirty, it's probably not the right thing, but a bit of build up on them, you know. Because it seems very, very light, the uh, panel lines are very, very faint and 
and the actual gaps are very thick. It all seems a bit exaggerated somehow. Where are we at then? I'm going to say... I'm going to say 8.5 out of 10 because obviously it's a Revell. The instructions are a bit abysmal. It is... They put it in white plastic, which isn't a good idea anyway. I think grey would have been better. Um, and it is very softly moulded, so I think eight and a half. Mm, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Still got the Matchbox charm, but it's just a bit toy-like compared to others. You know, the Lysander was better, um, and um, so was the Dauntless, really. I think it had a bit more finesse and detail about it. So eight and a half is where I'm at. I think that's probably generous, to be honest, on this one. But we're very grateful to James because I know that he's been he's been a bit unwell recently. Uh, without going into the details, he's not been so well, and uh, I know he's had um, I think his mum's not been too well, and of course he lost his dog as well. So he's had a few things, um, you know, not not such good things happening. And um, it's very nice of him to make the effort. I think he had this in his loft, and he needed to get the time to go up in his loft and find it for us, which he duly did, along with those other two kits that we saw uh, or we've recently had as well. So thank you very much, James. Appreciate it. Really do, especially when you've been through some tough times. I hope, hope things are, uh, are improving for you. And don't ever stop being amusing and sarcastic when you're on the live chat. I'm sure you will anyway. <laughs> well, there we go. So that's the that's the Matchbox Stroke Ravel Rebox of the Sea Venom FAW22. Um, yeah, I think it was one of our later ones. And uh, I'm just wondering about the time scale of when that actually came out originally. It was right at the end of the Matchbox ownership, and that might reflect why well, maybe the quality is not quite so high as, as some other things. But they have got, you know, they've got some detail there, like the seat belts on the seats, but they just didn't see it through on all the other parts. It just seems a bit, a bit dumbed down. Is that? I don't know. That's the right expression. Um, I just wonder if any of the others I haven't seen are like that. The later ones, like the Puma, and what's the other one, Tiger Moth. Of people like the Tiger Moth, so maybe not, maybe not. Anyway, eight and a half out of ten. Thank you very much, James, for helping the channel. Really appreciate it, mate. Thanks a lot. Um, I shall get this um, very carefully packaged because one or two parts are trying to leave, and we don't want them to. So, see what we can do about that. Um, and try and get it back to you only one piece. Uh, might use a bit of uh, bubble wrap in the box to stop it moving. That's probably the best idea. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you uh, enjoyed and. Uh, the video and found it interesting uh, and obviously we all, all owe James a beer. <laughs> uh, if any of you have got any more, I've got Tiger Moth or Puma or any I've missed, I'm trying to think, I'm sure there's another one I keep missing, but uh, any of the other Matchbox uh, kits that we haven't seen, we're always willing to have a quick look. In the meantime, until next time, I'm sure there'll be more videos coming along very soon. I think we've got another um, uh, another interesting German subject coming up in the not too distant future. So stay tuned folks and don't miss out on what's coming up soon. Thanks a lot in the meantime. Don't forget if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. If you have, ding the notification bell. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and smash that like button. And until next time, thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.